Yo, what is good, YouTube? Krishan checking back in with another video. If you would like to support me or the channel in any way, you can do so by liking this video and subbing to the channel. So I know you guys are probably wondering why am I starting this video off with an update of Nathan Diasha. In my last video, I actually did a review of Nathan's 2021 season, but I left out this video, man. And when I first seen this video, I was so shocked. Like, Nathan just completely looked like an alien. Like, look at the conditioning in the glutes and the conditioning in the hamstrings. I believe this was an update that was before the Arnold Classic UK. It may have been before the Yamamoto Cup. I'm not actually 100% sure. But I do know when I saw this, man, I was just like, what is this? And uh, I can't believe I left this out of the last video I did, so I just wanted to start this video off with this crazy update from Nathan Diasha, man. And in my opinion, this was one of like the top five biggest things that made me drop my job this year. But getting into the video for today, we actually have a couple of updates from the Persian Wolf, Heidi Chupin. And man, Heidi always looks like he's in shape, man. Chest striated, legs, vein, cross striated, like... Oh my God, man. I believe it just must be something that they're eating over there in the Middle East because Baruz also has this same level of crazy conditioning. But honestly, I believe Heidi just came in a little bit too, not too conditioned, but I believe he was a little downsized and it was very apparent to me from his legs from behind at this past year's Mr. Olympia and going forward. Heidi is pretty much always in condition. He really just needs to figure out how much he needs to weigh to not spill over, but also not look too small compared to some of these guys. Because once again, he's standing next to Brandon Curry, Big Rami, Nick Walker, Hunter Labrada. Like, these are some big guys, and Heidi is the smallest out of them. Granted, he is the most conditioned, but he just needs to find a perfect balance because also in the past, I've seen it looks like Heidi put on some size, and it seemed like he was almost blowing out his midsection. So I think that's why him and Honey ran by a pull back. And here's another update from Heidi Chupin that was also posted from this week. This is just a side chest. And a lot of people say they don't like this execution from Heidi, but, I mean, he maybe opens up a little. Honestly, I like this. I like this execution from him. Some people say he opens up too much, but Heidi's chest looks huge in this pose. Side leg, crazy, of course. He maybe could. Midsection doesn't look as tight. It looks a little distended in the beginning before he flexes, but... This is an amazing side chest in my opinion. Uh, let me know how you guys feel about this in the comment section below. In our next story of the day, we actually have a back update posted by William Bonek. And this isn't a recent update. This was actually from the Arnold Classic Prep Files. I think he said this was taken around September the 8th. And honestly, man, I seen somebody say somewhere that William would have got second place at the Arnold Classic. And I still would like to have seen him next to Nick Walker, but... Taking a second thought at that, Nick had improved his side chest and his side tricep a lot, so he may have been able to beat Bonek in those poses. But overall, I still felt like Bonek would have beat Nick at the Arnold Classic. I still would have liked to see them head-to-head, -head, but I do believe that Nick would get the edge simply because Bonek doesn't have the detail in the midsection, and that's kind of where Nick would get him at. But as you guys can see here, this was the package that William Bonek brought. Uh, this was in the hotel before the Mr. Olympia. And the only knock I really have on him, as you guys can see in the picture to the left, his midsection is kind of wide, and he doesn't have the most detail. And when you get compared to guys like Heidi Chupin and Nick Walker, man, you're going to have to have that detail. But honestly, this front last spread, a uh, lot better than Nick Walker. It's not a knock on him, but this is actually a pretty good last spread from a shorter guy. But I'm excited to see what William is going to bring to the stage next season, man. I don't think he's finished. I do believe William does have to requalify for the Mr. Olympia because he didn't get top five. But I do believe we will see a better version than we've seen at the Olympia of William Bonek this season. And in our next story of the day, we actually have a physique update from Keon and Pearson. Now, I was thinking that this wasn't recent because Keon looks like he has a death face and like he's a couple days out from stepping on stage. But remember, guys, that Keon is uh, around 200 pounds, I believe. And I know he has to drop down to probably around 180 to meet the classic weight cap. So I thought potentially since he's dieted down, this could potentially be recent. It's probably not, though, guys. It's probably not recent because Keon looks like he's a couple days out from stepping on stage. But anyway... This is amazing, man, and if this isn't recent, I wonder when what prep this was from because I don't think this was from his Mr. Olympia prep. This may have been when Keon was in classic physique because this looks like Keon was about to bring some next-level conditioning, man. Look at the separation and the lines and the quads. But besides that, Keon put up this post a couple days ago showing like a nine-year transformation, uh, him from 17 to 26. And even to the left, guys, you can just see the genetics when he was natural. I'm not even sure if he was working out yet, but you can see the traps. 
you can see the abs he still has like the same ab separation uh i've heard a lot of people say that keon has the spread in his abs from using so much gear but you can see even here he still has like the split it's just gonna be a little bigger now because he's put on more size and more muscle in his midsection but this is an incredible transformation man and you guys can see good genetics you know he didn't come from anything so and in our next story of the day, actually courtesy of buys and tries, I actually watched this video, but I want to use the post from their account. Uh, Fuad Abi recently announced on his page that he will be doing the commentary with Dennis James for the 2022 Arnold Classic in Ohio, and he also officially retired as well. He was thinking about stepping on stage again, but Fuad said he doesn't have the best blood work. And with everything going on in bodybuilding, he doesn't really see a reason to step on stage, so he officially retired because I guess he's tired of people calling him the Kai Green of the podcast. You know, he's always like, maybe he'll compete, maybe he won't. But on his Instagram, Fuad's recent physique updates have been interesting to me. And it has been interesting to see him drop weight and see his physique. But I'm excited to, I might actually go to the Arnold Classic this year, guys. But if not, I'll watch the commentary and I'm excited to hear Fuad and Dennis James on that. I really think bodybuilding is moving forward. You know, Fuad has one of the biggest and best podcasts and now he's, commentating and you know pretty much everyone from that podcast is just doing so well in bodybuilding man it's just good to see the camaraderie and good to see something positive in bodybuilding throughout all this negativity we have but i hope you guys did indeed enjoy this video like comment and sub i'm out